Uh, the next chart is um, a quote, very recent quote, January 22 of this year, uh, by the uh, uh, CEO of uh, Shell Oil, Royal Dutch Shell. By the year 2100, the world's energy system will be radically different from today's. It will indeed. The world's current predicament limits our maneuvering room. We are experiencing a step change in the growth rate of energy demand, and Shell est estimates that after 2015, that's just around the corner, supplies of easy to access oil and gas will no longer keep up with demand. That may have already happened, as we noted from that former chart, and as we see with, with gas over $10 and uh, oil over $115 a barrel. As a result, he says, society has no choice but to add other energy sources. Have you noticed society doing that at any aggressive clip? Uh, the next chart, and I want to spend some meaningful amount of time uh, looking at what are those alternatives. We're very much like the uh, young couple whose grandparents have died and left them a big inheritance. And um, the young couple now has established a really lavish lifestyle. They're really living it up. Uh, 85% of all the money they spend comes from their grandparents' inheritance. Coal, petroleum, natural gas. And only 15% of it comes from their income. Now they look at how old they are, they look at their grandparents' inheritance, and gee, it's going to run out before they retire, so they really got to do something. Either they got to spend less, or they got to make more. That's exactly where we are. 85% of all the energy we use is the equivalent of our grandparents' inheritance. We inherited it. It's there in the ground. Coal, oil, and gas. And only 15% of the energy that we use is something else. Now, this 85% is going away. We've reached the maximum production. And if the world is going to follow the model of the United States, no matter what we do, the production in the world is going to be less and less, harder and harder to get, more and more expensive. That's and in spite of drilling more oil wells than all the rest of the world put together, in spite of, I think, having the best oil people in all the world, we've not been able to make out M. King Hubbard to be a liar because we still today, with all of that technology, with 530,000 producing oil wells, we still are producing only about half the oil that we produced in 1970. Well, what are the alternatives? What will we be using? at the end of this magnificent age of oil. And um, Hyman Rickover didn't know how long it would last. They were about 100 years into the age of oil. Oil had not peaked then. It wouldn't peak for another 50 years, 51 years or so. So he had no idea how long it lasted. But he said that how long it lasted was important in only one regard, that the longer it lasted, the more time would we have to plan a, a, a rational transition from oil to other sustainable, renewable sources of fuel. Well, here we are today, and what have we done? The president said in one of the State of the Union addresses that we were hooked on oil. We are indeed, and I think that rushing out there to drill in public lands, to drill in Anwar, to drill offshore, is exactly the equivalent of giving the dope addict another fix. As the president says, we really, really do have to wean ourselves from these fossil fuels. By the way, there are three groups out there that want to do this for very different reasons. One of those groups is the national security group that I mentioned that is really concerned that we have only 2% of the oil and use 25% of the oil and import almost two-thirds of what we use. Our second largest importer now is Saudi Arabia. It was Mexico. They've fallen back that really places us in a very precarious uh, uh, position. The president has indicated that we really must transition from these fossil fuels to renewables. What will they be? And here we have a brief listing, and I think that this subtends uh, about all of the possible renewals. By the way, we get a bit more than the non-fossil fuel energy from nuclear power, 8% of the 15% is nuclear. Um, 
we get about 20% of our electricity from nuclear. It's down just a little now, 19 something, roughly 20. The French get about um, 75, 80%, but we still produce more nuclear than France because we have a whole lot bigger economy than France has. Uh, we're the largest nuclear power producers in the world that could and probably should grow. Uh, only 7% in other renewables. The things that I'm very fond of are solar and, uh, and wind. I have a place off-grid, and I have solar panels, and I have wind machines and batteries for storage. And uh, so I'm a huge fan of solar and uh, wind. But these were 1% were of 7% in 2000. They're really growing, growing maybe 30%, 40% a year. That's huge growth. So they're four or five times bigger. 0.28% big deal because this is only 0.07%. So these things that we that, that will be important sources of energy in the future are now are now very small, growing rapidly but still very small. Wood. Uh, this is um, the paper industry and the timber industry wisely using what would otherwise be a waste product, and there's not a huge potential for growth there without without doing what North Korea has done, for instance, that is cutting down their forests. Uh, waste energy, that's very popular. And there's a great facility up here in northern Montgomery County. I've been, by the way, I would be proud to have it by my church. It looks really nice. The waste comes in in big containers and in railroad cars, and I don't even see it. And they handle it very well. I didn't even smell it when I was there. But I want to caution that this huge waste stream is the result, largely the result of profligate use of fossil fuels. Look at it. Almost everything in that waste stream was the result of using oil, gas, or coal. It's a really great idea now. Recycle what you can, burn what's left, better than burying it in the ground somewhere. But that's not a silver bullet, not a solution to our problem, because in an energy deficient world, this is really gonna shrink because the energy just isn't going to be there to create all this waste. Conventional hydro, huge. We've tapped out on that in our country. We've probably dammed up some rivers we shouldn't have dammed up. But some people believe we could get as much from micro hydro.